You're listening to the Casual Sports Show. Palmer slipping away at first. Palmer extending the play. Nobody there. Crosses the field. Larry Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald is going to take it into Green Bay territory. The show exclusively known as the voice of the Arizona Cardinals fan club, The Bird Gang. Fitzgerald inside the 30. The 20. Fitzgerald's is over. It's insane. Now with your host, Earl Burnett, a.k.a. Casual E. Bird Gang on three. One, two, three. Bird Gang. Welcome, welcome into the casual house on a Monday night, the start of the week. Always the dragging part of the week to have to get started. But that's part of what we do. You're listening to the Casual Sports Show right here on KSRN. I am your host, Earl Burnett, a.k.a. Casual E. And if you want to be a part of this show and follow what's going on with the show, hit us up on our four outlets on social media. Of course, we're on Facebook Live as usual, and Instagram, YouTube, and our uh, Twitter as well. All with the same tab, Casual Sports, K-A-Z-U-A-L, and the Z is at the end of the word sports. Also, you can download uh, and subscribe at www.ksrnaz.com, and that's download of the apps, mobile apps, iOS. And, of course, Android. So we're back in here tonight. I'm going to do a solo again tonight. My man Sean is out. So um, this is what we do. A hot, 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 hot is the weather down here, of course, in, in Arizona, as y'all don't know. Man, I think it hit like, what, 113 today? Something like that. <laughs> And it's still when it's nighttime, it's cooling down. So I don't know if you can call that cooling down, but it's cooling down down to a little right at 100 or a little under 100. Uh, it's it's crazy out there as far as the heat goes. It's getting it's getting bit, it's getting crazy. Not letting up either. Seems like it's getting worse. Uh, but anyway, we got to deal with it. We got the ACs going, and the bills are freaking high as they can be. But uh, this thing on virus is, man, I remember back when this thing came, when it started, but, you know, everybody was anticipating this heat down here in Arizona, being able to attack this thing virus and not allowing it to live. But this thing is a super virus, and it's living straight through it like no problem. Uh, Jay, my man uh, Javon Adam does a show with Star Saxon. They call the virus 1-9. He just calls it 1-9. And then my, uh, my guy over at... Uh, JB and Benny Blue Review, he just calls it the Rona. So <laughs> I'm going to put those two together from now on. They're just going to be called Rona 1-9. That's what it's called. So the Rona 1-9 is going down, and it ain't letting up. And that sucker is like, uh-uh, I don't die. This thing is straight up multiplying, probably in different strands because it's causing all kinds of havoc still. Um they still have they don't know a lot more a lot more information about this thing it is what it is and we have to find a way to continue to just live with this thing and all the sports and all of the businesses and all of everything around in our whole world that we live in is trying to operate around this thing thing and live with it so it's hard and it's tough i'm still kind of going through it myself as far as the after effects of this thing man it it goes in if you got some underlining stuff and it messes some things up that, you know, take some time to slowly come around. And, and man, it's, I'm still dealing with the acid reflex stuff that went in and messed up, some sinus stuff. I mean, it's, it's man, it's, it's tough, especially at night when you're trying to sleep. It just it just rears up the stuff that has already been, been um, you know, with the virus, when it enters into you after that, you know, your underlying issues, it goes in and starts to mess up other things. My friend on the uh, Bur from the Bird Gang, Kelly Donato, who went through this whole thing, like the hard, the hard month and a half of this whole thing and still going through some after effects herself is finally out of the waters of, of you know, she's definitely surviving it. But it's just like, I'm, you know, myself, it's it's leaving some stuff destruction in its wake and it's got some things that she's still dealing with and i'll probably get her in here to come in here probably at the end of the week sometime or midweek 
to tell her story about it because, I mean, the more people hear about what's, what people are going through, probably they'll be more apt to to be more responsible and wear their mask and not complain about it. But let's hope that's the case. But I'm still, I'm still even right now, I mean, I mean, Rudy Gobert was the face of the NBA, and that was like way back when this thing started. And even today, he's still saying he's having issues with his smell issues, and I agree with that. I'm still up and down with the smell issues right now. I can smell really good one day, and then sometimes it just it just locks up, and you just can't smell anything for a few hours, and it comes back, and it's just on and off, on and off. Really weird. I don't know. This thing is leaving some type of these effects behind, and who knows what the long-term effects are going to be for this thing. Nobody knows. So that Rona 1-9 is no joke. You, you definitely want you don't want to play around with that. Make sure you take all the precautions that are necessary. Follow the, the lines of the CDC. And don't be stupid. Don't be an idiot. Because once you get it, you're definitely going to change your tune. That's for sure. But uh, another thing that went down in the news today that was pretty interesting to me um, a story that was a long time ago finally had some closure or start starting some closure, and that's the death of the DJ from Run DMC, Jam Master J. I mean, his killers are finally brought, you know, indicted today after from 18 years ago, 2002. That story went down. I remember it was a long time ago, but 18 years ago, and they finally get two guys. And I think this happened in Jamaica, if I believe, if I can, I mean, if I can remember. I think it did, but I'm not so up on now, you know, this details of this story, but I know, of course, somebody that is. And my man, Javon Adams and Star Saxon run that show, Microphone Masters and Disposable Arts. And they are hip hop gurus, guys that know the ins and outs of everything that's happening around hip hop. And it's not always about music. It's a lot of stuff that happens in their lives, these, people, these guys' lives and political things. They, they, they have a really, those shows are really informative when it comes to that industry so uh i'm gonna go check those guys out and that's how i'm gonna get my information and you should check them out too they're on the ksrn network all throughout the week you can catch microphone masters right here at uh six i mean i'm sorry at uh 9 p.m and you can catch uh disposable arts on the weekends at 9 p.m on ksrn saturday and sunday and uh it's a lot of good information, a lot of good music and everything. So those guys know the deal. You can catch my man Javon on Facebook if you want to get more information about that. He is on Facebook at uh, Javon Adams, and that's J-A-V-O-N, and then Adams on Facebook. So check him out and ask him, you know, information you want to get about what's, when those shows are going to drop. But uh, we're going to jump into what we normally do about this time. And let's find out what's going around, what's going on in this world of Corona, or should I say Rona 1 9. What's going on? What's going on? Yeah, what's going on? What's going on? In the casual house. No matter what we talk about when it's going on, when it has to do with sports, the Rona 1 9 has something to do with it. Everything that's going around this 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 virus, everything sports right now is going around it, trying to find ways to get around it, trying to find ways to cope with it, trying to find. I mean, everything is centered around this virus. But the NBA playoffs took effect today, Monday morning, and that was really weird—a Monday morning playoff game that didn't have a feel of a playoff game. But you see the logo on the field on the court says "playoff playoffs," but you're like, "This don't feel like a playoff game." But the intensity of the Utah and Denver game turned into a playoff atmosphere, and that was cool. So, I don't know. It just seems kind of weird to try to, you know, put the virtual fans up there and and give some type of sound off as though, you know, it's a full packed stadium. And it, it's just hard to <laughs> to look at this thing and say, oh, that's the NBA playoffs. But nevertheless, it is. It is. It is. Um, the Denver and Utah game was a pretty dang good game um, back and forth throughout the game. And I don't think anybody led no more than about nine points or so late. But then early on, it was back and forth with two points, three points here and there. And it was they, they were going at it. And um, the key to this game was the superstars in this game because it was two against one. Uh, Denver, of course, with Jokic and Murray and then 
Donovan Mitchell just went crazy today. Uh, he did everything he could to keep that team on his back. He took that team on his back and went crazy. Dropped a 57 spot on him in an overtime game. But in regulation, he had 51. So you can't say he didn't really get the 50 spot. He finished with 51 points in regulation. But uh, nine rebounds and seven assists, he, he was everywhere. I mean, he did everything he could. Now, the whole thing in that you look at it now, you go, if D. Mitchell had to drop 57 points in overtime and they lose a game, he's in trouble the rest of this series if that's the case. They need some guys that's going to sh- help score that basketball with him because he can't do that the full series. No way he can keep that up every game of the series scoring 50-plus points. You have to score 57 to stay in the game. Uh, they were without Mike Conley and uh, what's that other guy's name? Bon, Boyan Bogdanovich. Good shooter on that team. And they, those guys were out. So Mitchell was pretty much holding down the scoring scoring the whole game. But uh, Jokic and Murray turned it up in that fourth quarter. You know, they almost lost that game, actually, down the stretch. Uh, but Jokic and uh, M- Murray turned it up. Murray, especially in the overtime, hit 10 points straight, uh, in, and he had his 36 points. But they were tough to deal with in that overtime, two against one. It was like, you know, man, double team. I mean, he, Donovan Mitchell was having all these double teams, double teams, double teams, but then those two guys – you know, it was two of those guys, so you can't double both of them. So uh, Murray got crazy, and then when he didn't double him, he dumped it off to Jokic, and Jokic hitting threes. So they're going to be a tough out. I don't. I, matter of fact, <laughs> I don't. Man, that Denver team looks pretty solid. I don't. I mean, I could see them being in the Western Conference Finals and really, really, really pushing it to the edge and making it to the dang finals. But they hit up one thirty-five today to one twenty-five on Utah, and. uh like I said, Donovan's going to be in trouble if that if he has to score like that every game. That's that's gonna he's gonna wear down real quick. And but he's game though. You can tell that guy he he goes and he keeps trying and he goes. But the Jazz, like I said, could have won that game. But when you get into games that are going back and forth tight like that, I mean, bam, one possession. It comes down to that one possession, and the uh, the Jazz got really tight. They got real tight, and then they start turning the ball over down the stretch. Uh, Rudy Gobert was, like, bumbling and stumbling all game long in that fourth quarter. He couldn't do anything, right? He was stumbling off his hands. He got away with a travel on the dunk. I mean, that uh, Mitchell gave him a good dime, and he took two quick steps and then dunked him. They didn't catch it. I guess they figured he was tall enough, and he still had his feet on the floor. But he he looked uncomfortable today for some reason. That's just me because I'm observing it from the TV, and I don't see – you know how they doing? You know you're not there live, so you don't really know. You can watch his face, you can't see, but just watching the game, he just felt like he was struggling today. But uh, Mitchell held it on as long as he could. But they went down the stretch and turned that ball over three straight possessions, and that's when Denver just took over the game. But um, another thing about this series that I noticed too, you know, without the fans and the atmosphere of. Of, of intimidation of an atmosphere for the road team. Uh, a lot of young players on the uh, all these clubs are starting to get more minutes in this playoffs. I'm starting to notice just all throughout all these games today, a lot of young guys are out there and producing because without that crowd and without that atmosphere of that, you know, that tension that comes along with that type of atmosphere, some of these young players usually don't rise up to that occasion. But now, I mean, no no fans and nothing like that. It's like they can just, you know, cruise and, and kind of get with, with get with uh you know, with the program. Yeah, just as I thought, my man Jay just hit me up and said they will be discussing Jam Master Jay on Microphone Masters this week. So you do not want to miss that. It is on the KSRN network. And I'm looking forward to it because I, I need to know some ins and outs about that whole situation. All I do know is that the guy was murdered. And I thought, I mean, I didn't know it was going on this long. I thought they had found, indicted somebody a long time ago. But I don't know the full story. So I'm looking forward to hearing Jay talk about it. And, of course, the only one, the one and only Star Saxon is going to definitely have a take, I'm sure. Looking forward to that. But I'm going to jump into the MLB. MLB is, man, you want to talk about, you want to talk about Rona 1-9? <laughs> Man, the MLB is dealing with it. 
they got some serious issues, man, when it comes to the Rona 1-9. Guys that are just just doing stupid things to cause outbreaks. I mean, then there are outbreaks that are coming down on teams that they don't know where it came from. And I mean, it's man, it's all over the place. Right now, uh, two guys from the Cleveland Indians, uh, Mike Clevenger and Zach Plasek, are in quarantine because of, you know, doing something stupid and going out and breaking protocol. And now that team is actually in a rift with each other. And I don't blame them. The teammates are ticked off. Why do these guys would be that selfish and go out and do something that stupid? But uh, I'd be mad, too, because you're jeopardizing the whole operation. You're jeopardizing that this whole thing can have a breakout. Another team has to get put on the shelf, and too many teams where that continues to happen. You might be shutting down this league. And when you talk about costing man people their money, you're playing with other people's money. Now, see, where I come from and where a lot of other people come from, you start messing with somebody else's money, then it becomes real personal. And you talk about messing with my money, dude, but when you're going out being stupid, they shut this league down and my check stop. Now you're talking about it's, those is fighting words. And those guys, I'm pretty sure in the club, in the in the clubhouse or in that locker room, pretty probably came down hard on these two dudes. The question is going to be, why didn't they get suspended? Why didn't the MLB suspend these two guys, these two pitchers? Um, I mean, the league rule says, I mean, as a, as as it pertains to COVID nineteen, uh, the commissioner can discipline for just cause. Don't you think that's just cause when somebody breaks protocol and? Something like that happens, and now your team is down two pitches and have to be quarantined, and now they're losing games and have to make up games down the dang road. All that stuff's happening. I mean, what else is just cause? I mean, MLB sent letters out to players that are breaking protocol, and that's probably why they haven't suspended these two guys because it's way more than two people breaking protocol. It's just haven't been caught, you know, publicly. If they're sending letters out already to people that they know that are breaking protocol, there's a lot of people breaking protocol. So, I mean, that that's, that's my guess of why there's no suspensions because if you do that, you got to suspend everybody. Now, everybody's team can't be that. Everybody's team can't uh, have to be in quarantine because people that are breaking quarantine, I mean, breaking protocol. Now you're talking way too many teams at a time and you have to shut this thing down. And they don't want to shut this thing down. It's a money train. They don't want to shut that down. Uh, but, I mean, it would be ridiculous to think that it's only those two guys that are breaking protocol. Uh, there are stories going around, they said, that are happening. That people are going out to dinner on the road, golfing. Uh, I mean, which is, you know, they, they leave those things open. Golfing, of course, you know, you would think that's open. But if you're mingling with other crowds and stuff like that, and it changes things. Flying in wives and girlfriends and stuff like that, man, that haven't even been tested and they just coming in, that's reckless. And it's at the, at the same time, they're they can do that because there's no bubble. They don't they don't they can it's not like there's nothing restricting those people from bringing people in other than a mandate that tells you to, you know, you know, be uh be safe, don't, you know, be a, social distance and all those things. But these guys ain't listening to that. They don't have nothing that's keeping them trapped like inside of a bubble. So they can bring in the wives, the girlfriends, or whatever, and bring them in, and it's no big deal. And they don't even get tested coming in. And that's crazy how they can get away with that. So that's why those guys didn't get suspended, because if you just spend those two, you got to suspend everybody that's doing it. But it's a mess, man. It's a mess right now. Uh I man, I I watched the NBA uh throughout this bubble thing. And why the MLB did not go to the bubble, I have no idea. Why? I mean, your your game is not as you know, like football, I can understand. The NFL probably can't handle a bubble or do a bubble, but I looked on when I'm watching those NBA games, and they always got the dang airplane view of that whole campus, and as they got that view going, I'm counting baseball diamonds. 1 2 Three, four, I mean, I think I count up to 13 baseball diamonds or more on that dang campus. Why couldn't they just put them down there in Disney on the, in the bubble with them? As, as, as much as 
MLB baseball plays games and double headers and, and, and day games, a lot of day games, night games. And I mean, they, it's only 60 games they had to do a schedule for. They could have put that together and put teams down there in a bubble and, and, and allowed this thing to be a little bit more safer for these players, safer from the ignorant people that don't care about somebody else. I mean, if you can trap somebody, then it's more unlikely that they can, you know, you can spot them easily when they get out of the bubble and go do something stupid. But it's only 60 games. It was only 60 games. But now you got breakouts already two weeks in the season before back then with two teams, and now you got these two guys. You got more cases are starting to pop out out of nowhere, and you're sending letters out if you know people are breaking protocol. This thing is only one more breakout from shutting it down. Right now, the St. Louis Cardinals right now are trying to find a way to, to get back up to the 60 games so they can qualify for the postseason. And they have to play 53 games in 43 days with 11 double headers. <laughs> That's like crazy. It's like 53 games in 44 days. That's that's crazy. I mean, baseball, I don't know. I think they're they, they, they not that far away from ending this thing or at least postponing it again and, and putting it on hold and waiting till everybody gets back and, you know, test and make sure everybody's cool again and trying to go back out and try this thing again because it's going to be unfair to some of these teams. And that's what's happening in the National League right now. Uh, some of the National League players are, are, are complaining, saying it's unfair that we got to go through these 60 games and this Cardinal team can potentially complete it in fewer games and get judged only by the winning percentage and they could get in the playoffs over somebody else. It's like that is unfair. That is unfair. So how is baseball going to make that fair, fair to to to, to the teams? Uh, that's why I, that's where I think the punishment comes into play. It has to be the uh, the underlying circumstance of why that breakout happened in that in that clubhouse. If you're breaking protocol and you go out and you cause the issue to happen by being negligent, you deserve to be punished, and you just take those as losses. I think you should be that. That should be the rule. You take those losses. Because you were negligent. You didn't keep your house clean. And you went out and deliberately said, I don't have to follow this. I, I'm, I'm tired of following this. Just like the people today that don't want to wear the mask. It's no different. I'm tired of wearing this mask. I'm an American. I got rights. Blah, 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 blah. And you go on out and do your thing. And it comes back. Everybody else is affected by it. But on the other hand, it would be unfair to, 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 to um, punish a team if that team had contracted it not knowing like like traveling or a hotel or even a false negative that's been going around in all these sports a false negative could cause a lot of things so if that is the circumstance then of course you'd be lenient toward that team and allow them to find a way to make those games up so i don't know baseball's got a lot to, a lot of man the commissioner manford rob manford got a lot of uh thinking on the fly when it comes to this dang on protocol to punishment and all these things that has to do with this coronavirus because I mean I don't think they're that far away from shutting this thing down a couple of more breakouts it's over with but I'm gonna talk about the D-backs real quick um, the D-backs finally push pull to 500 right now which is awesome they get to 500 but before I do the D-backs, I want to check the, the scores of the NBA games right now. I mean, I didn't go through that right now. Uh, three games have completed from the four-game schedule. Uh, but, uh, of course, you already we already talked about Utah and Denver. Uh, Denver's going up 1-0 on that one. Boston took down Philly 109-101. to So they lead that series, and NB had 26-16, and but not enough because the Celtics got scorers and defenders. So, man. And uh, Kimber Walker finally got back to form, too. So watch out for the Celtics. They are going to be a handful, that's for sure. Uh, Brooklyn and Toronto played today, and the Toronto Raptors, the defensive juggernaut that they are, held down that, that, that Karis Levert. And that just took everything away from the Nets. They held him down to only 15 points. He wasn't, they, they weren't going to let him get off on him. They watched that game against Portland. Uh-uh. They said, oh, no, 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 no. That's, this is a totally different defensive team that you got to come in here and do that with. That ain't happening. They wasn't having it. 124 to 102. That should be a sweep. 
I mean, I don't see, I don't see, <laughs> and see, it's kind of weird because right now I would say if they was back in Brooklyn, they'd probably still won. But that <laughs> that element is gone from this whole thing, and it feels just like weird. Let's just go play another quiet game and another quiet game. You got to find your own way to manufacture momentum in those games, and if you don't have superstars that can muster up that momentum and muster up that that energy to get that on for that team you're going to struggle and no Durant no Kyrie Irving those are the guys that would pretty pretty much control that momentum and get you shots when you need them you got a young guy like Karis LeVert at some point like I said he's going to wear down and not and not know how to figure this thing out as those games go on and play tougher teams and the playoffs started so that Toronto team is seasoned when it comes to defense a lot of those East teams are just defensive minded and that you mean man, that's gonna be a tough team to, to deal with too. But that should be a sweep. I mean, uh Toronto should take care of that, especially when there's no home <laughs> home field or any home court advantage at all on either side. Uh right now the Clippers and Mavs are are going at it with four minutes and four, 45 seconds left in that game, and the Clippers are up by three. Dallas led pretty much throughout the way, one or two points here, you know, back and forth. I'm kind of watching it here on the uh, game cast, so I'm not actually having the actual game in front of me. But uh, the Clippers are up 101 to 98 in the fourth quarter, and you know when it comes down to the fourth quarter, the Mavs just fold up shop and say, that's it, Audi. See you later. And they lose their heads. And if they got a lead or not, it does not matter. They fold up shop in that fourth quarter down the stretch. And so Clippers know how to clamp down. And defense in the fourth quarter, and you clamp down on some teams, that, that shows you what they're really made of. And they can't handle it, especially in the playoff atmosphere. And this is a different type of playoff atmosphere. So a lot of guys can handle this stuff. Like I said, some of these young cats – or playing minutes and doing stuff on on the court that you don't think they should be doing, knocking down open threes and and not open threes. And I'm just like, dude, you ain't supposed to be doing that yet. You a rookie. (laughs) There was a rookie on the dang on uh, Utah Jazz earlier today who was knocking down shots. I'm like, man. But uh, that atmosphere is different. This is going to be really interesting to see how this thing, as it progresses, and gets to its climax, what it's going to look like at the end. I mean, <laughs> people are probably going to be wore out from this thing. Like, man, this was really hard to do. Can you imagine having to come back and do this for a full season? And don't sleep on that. That might end up happening again. So there's no, there hasn't been anything that I know of yet about no vaccine that's ready for this thing on Rona, Rona 1-9. So, man, if they can, if they have to do a whole bubble season, that's going to be something else. But uh, those are the four games tonight. Tomorrow, the, the other four will jump off um, Orlando and Milwaukee, um, Miami and Indiana. That's going to be a knockdown, dragout defensive game. I'm looking forward to OKC and Houston because I want to see Chris Paul just dismantle Houston with or without uh, Westbrook. It doesn't matter to me. I think OKC has enough when they're fully, when they're fully at full strength. It doesn't matter because three-pointers can only go down for so many games in a series. And if Houston doesn't learn how to play some dang defense every once in a while, there's no way they're going to be winning series. So I I don't see them going that far. And then Portland has to go up against those L.A. Lakers, and I know they're shivering shivering in their shoes right now having to take down that dang monster, Damian Lillard. So I'm looking forward to that one, definitely, and see how that – how they hang with the Lakers and how if it's going to be, you know, a game where you can go, okay, they're going to be in this thing. It's going to be a seven-game series. It's going to come down to seven games. But we'll see if the Lakers flex their muscles with LeBron and AD and take their game up another notch for the playoffs because that's what happens. Superstars do that. They take their game up another notch, and they find ways to, like I said, manufacture that momentum that, that they need to win games down the stretch, especially within this – atmosphere that they're playing and they're going to definitely need that there's no crowd to amp up everything to give you the momentum and so it's going to be hard for them to manufacture their own energy and they have to do it but i'm trying to figure out how it's going to look at the end when the team that wins this championship is raising the trophy yet with no crowd there no confetti no <laughs> it's just going to just look really weird and when you talk about putting an asterisk behind it at the end in, in the record books that's what you're talking about 
Uh, but anyway, that's the latest what's going on down here in the bubble. I'll take my first break here. When we come back, the NFL camps have just gotten off and they're in pads and it doesn't look as usual. It doesn't look normal either. But there are a lot of injuries and we're going to have a casualties report. Stick around. We'll be right back to the Casual Sports Show right here on KSRN. AZ.com. KSR and the hottest internet radio station on the web. If you have a podcast or have music and want to be heard, drop us a line at www.ksrnaz.com. The exclusive voice of the Bird Gang, your casual sports radio network. Last time you had your awnings clean. What about the oil stains on your driveway? Majestic Services has you covered. They're your pressure washing and window cleaning experts. With over 11 years of experience, they'll provide you with a free, no obligation quote for your awnings, driveways, stucco, concrete, asphalt, pool deck, stone, and more. Give Matt a call at 602-881-8228. Commercial or residential, let Majestic Services do your dirty work. 602-881-8228. KSRN has the inside track on all things sports, with topics and opinions from former players and local personalities. Catch 15-year NFL veteran Ed Smith and Jay Adams on Easy Sports Talk every well, Saturday. Unfortunately, we're just back in these knees. I don't quite have that ability, or at least I use my rookies. For all things Arizona Cardinals, tune in Monday nights with Casual E and Sean McConnell. Bird game. I know it was another tough loss, but keep encouraged. We miss you, B.A. <laughs> And now, you can exclusively listen to former Arizona Cardinal, Jeremy Bridges, on his show, JB and Benny Blue Review. Exactly. Don't be dumb. Sending a message out to the world. Always laying that message. Don't be yeah. dumb. Yes, your guy, Benny Blue, comedian extraordinaire. Uh, exclusively on KSRN, Casual Sports Radio Network. This is the sound of a racing heart. It's beating a little faster because it belongs to a young child. But this child isn't in the middle of a close soccer game or playing with her puppy in the yard. Her heart is racing because she's just been told she has to move foster homes again. Change a child's story. There's a child waiting for a volunteer like you. Learn how you can help at casaforchildren.org. This is Cliff Kingsbury, and you're listening to the second best sounding voice in the valley, Casual E, on the Casual Sports Show here on KSRN Arizona. Casual House, Earl Burnett, a.k.a. Casual E, right here on KSRN. And um, the NFL camps have started. Okay, I got it. (laughs) Okay, the NFL camps have started after my little technical glitch there. But uh, the NFL camps have just gotten in pads for the first time this week. And a lot of injuries are going down. I mean, man, are they going, is it getting crazy injury-wise? But before I get on that, 
some other news that are happening in the NFL right now. The Washington football team has hired a new team president, uh, Jason Wright, former Cardinal. Didn't know that until today. Former Cardinal, uh, 38-year-old Jason Wright. Um, he was a standout uh, special teams guy on the Cardinals in 2009 and 10, running back. But he was, you know, made his mark on special teams. He retired uh, here as a Cardinal in 2011, but went on to into business school. And that's paid off for him because now he is the team president and the first African-American team president. Uh, when you say the, I mean, you have to say the first because he is the first, but uh, you, you hate to have to make the emphasis on that. Wow, he's the first black president of a football team. Well, why can't he just be the president of a football team? But the way things have gone when in our world today and the injustice and all these things, it, it has to be noted that he is indeed <laughs> the first uh, black president of a football team. So, I mean, I was the same way when they were kept saying the same thing about the first two uh, African-American head coaches that were in a Super Bowl against each other with Lovey Smith and, uh, and uh, what's the dude's name? Tony Dungy. Uh, it was like, why aren't, they, why, why aren't they just not coaches in the Super Bowls? Like, doesn't make any sense to, to me. To, but then when you think about it, the way things have been, and you go, wow, that is incredible. They are the first two. <laughs> to be doing that so in this case it's the, he is the absolute first and i don't know if that had anything to do with where we are today why that hire went down i hope it is for the right motive that is because of change and not just because of trying to uh save face so to speak but uh snyder went on and hired the guy and and he this is the guy he is highly highly from interviews that i have heard Highly qualified. I mean, the man knows his business. He was a player in the league, so he knows that. So he's a very intelligent young man. Really, really, man, well spoken. Not, not that saying that any African American wouldn't be, but I'm just saying, uh, why would they not have gotten this opportunity before, as opposed to right now, when there's so many of these guys out here that are just like this guy, or maybe better, or whatever. Who knows? But we are. That's a step in the right direction. Definitely, definitely a step in the right direction. So props to the Washington football team. Man, that's going to be weird to keep saying that without putting that red skin behind it. But uh, yeah. since I'm touching on that real quick, I was talking to my daughter today about this, about, <laughs> you know, when, they, when the Washington football team changed their name and why they changed their name and, the, and the dis you know, all the um, – discrimination and, and, and things that, you know, that comes comes along with those Indians and the Redskin thing. And I was thinking, and I got to talking to her, and I told her, I said, yeah, we're, we're, we're uh, African Americans are right now fighting that with this uh, Black Lives Matter thing. But when I think, too, I said, you know, when we're going through this Black Lives Matter, there's some things that we as the African American community can also do some changing ourselves and changing narratives about changing narratives about the uh, racism and changing narratives about uh, being looked at as whatever because of the color of your skin or discriminated because of the color of your skin. And I got to think, and I was like, you know what? <laughs> There's still gangs out there, blacks on black, killing each other. And that that's part of the world we live in. I'm not saying that only blacks are doing that. That's every Gangs are in every ra every uh, every race. That's for sure. But I'm just saying, we if we want to change and we want to change, let's start changing some things where we don't hang on to some things that we can let go. And I, and I listen to a lot of rap songs and they're still using the N word. And it's like, okay, we need to let that go. If we talk about change, how about we let that go? And that's like a uh, form of holding on to some racism, isn't it? If I mean, we didn't make up that word. Black people didn't make up that word, so why are we keeping it alive? Just like those Redskins say, let's stop keeping that name alive. Take it off the helmet. Take it off the name. Take it off. Okay, let's stop keeping this N-word alive. We don't, I mean, we get really, really offended and ticked off when the other races use it against us, but we're saying it still. 
in a different form. They want to call it a different form, but you're still keeping it alive. You didn't make up that word. So I don't know. That's I got. To, I was talking to my daughter about this, and she was like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. I said, yeah, we need to change some things ourselves. Yes, we're changing all these other things that have been, you know, we have been uh, wrongly, you know, treat, mistreated, not equally, you know, all these things. I get all of that. But now that that's starting some change and it's starting to come our way a little bit more, we need to change some things ourselves. And I know I'm going to take a lot of heat for saying that, but you know what? It's the truth. We need to we need to erase some things, too, at the same time. But I'm glad this 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 African-American, this, this black, young, 38, smart businessman is going to be running a team now. And we're going to see how he does that. And it's not like he, he came in saying it's not like it's going to be a – overnight thing just because there's a different you know person coming in here to do it he said it's not gonna be he said he said itself it's let me be clear this is his quote let me be clear i'm not the savior <laughs> neither is coach ron rivera so you know there's no silver bullet to turn around an organization is what he's saying and i agree with him you're going to need some time but my question is will he get that time will he be fair enough to get that time let's just see how that goes and we'll see how that rolls out but uh, he's a good, smart businessman, and I'm pretty sure he knows some ins and outs and some tricks of the trade to get where he needs to go. But he's got a mess down there that he has to fix. Uh, man, they got that sexual harassment thing going on. He's got to jump right into the changing of the name. He's got to find a name for the team. And he's got a lot of – I mean, the Alex Smith, and that's all on the field stuff. This, the field stuff is for the coaches and stuff. But still, business-wise, he's got a lot of things he has to deal with to come right in off – right out the thing – right off the gate and, and start getting the work on. So he was asked about the name change, and he was like, yeah, okay, yeah, we're going to do that, but we're going to make that a, a statewide thing where the communities are involved with making a decision and everything. He's going to reach out to the fans and try to get the fans and everybody, sponsors and all, to come up with this name. I was like, wow, that's going to be interesting. That's pretty cool. I mean, you get everybody involved, and everybody gets an opportunity to say their, what they think it should be. <laughs> It's going to be interesting to see what the final name ends up. But this Washington football team, is, he says, is going to be around for a while because it's going to take them some time to come up with a name. It's not going to just happen overnight. But other news in the NFL, um, Des Bryant is getting the workout. And I know Sean would be love, love to hear that. <laughs> he always gave me uh, a hard time when I bring Des Bryant up. But uh, he's getting a workout with the Baltimore Ravens. Um, the workout is taking place during pad week, so he's going to be in pads and running around doing routes. And and they're keeping it under wraps of what that workout's looking like and what it's going to uh, entail and what it's going to be the result of it. But I got to wonder, if he walks away from this workout and they don't sign him, is that the end for Des Bryant? Because if one team can't take him in and he, they need receivers and, they, and he doesn't feel that need, then maybe he's past his prime and past his time, and it's time to hang it up. But we'll see. We'll see. But will another desperate team come and say, well, if you don't want him, I'll take him, like the Packers. Maybe they need a wide receiver. You know, they need a wide receiver. I don't know what they was doing in the draft, but they need a wide receiver to help out Adams. Adams is their number one guy, but now that you know that a number one guy has no help. You can double that guy and take him out of a game, and next thing you know, man, you're running one-dimensional one dimensional team. So they need another guy on the other side that can free Adams up. Could Des Bryant fill that spot? We don't know. We don't know where Des Bryant is physically right now. But they say uh, John Harbaugh was on record saying that he looks good. He looks like he's in shape and been keeping up his body and all these things. So, I mean, I've seen some videotape of him running routes and everything, and I mean, that's different when it's you in shorts and on your own, but now you're in the NFL camp. Can it look like NFL football to these teams enough to say, okay, yeah, we'll sign this dude, and we'll see. We'll see. I hope he gets another shot because I hate to see a guy end his career, you know, from injuries like that, and he has a desire to continue to play. So we'll see. Um, of all these teams that need receivers, I mean, I'm pretty sure if, he pass, if, if the Ravens pass up on him, somebody might give him a shot. But it's really tough too because to give a guy a shot like that when there's no preseason games, you can't you can't really see what he's got up against real competition. All you have is what's going on in your camp. So if you if you sign him, will you put him out of, put him out there on the field in game one? Probably not. 
you probably put him out there in, in some spot duty to find out what he can really do or whatever, then you'll make your decision to let him go or not. So I think the first two or three games of this season is going to be more like a preseason type of game for all these teams anyway. Um, other news in the NFL, something that's really caught my eye, the Kansas City Chiefs, the champions, are going to be opening their stadium up for 22% attendance for these games. Now, I'm kind of curious about that. 22% attendance. So that means you're going to be having seats spread out, social distancing, and all those things going to be happening. But why take the risk of having fans in the stands and you're not going to be testing those fans and that virus is going to, maybe it won't spread to the team, but it's still being spread throughout the community if you allow it in that stadium. People are not going to follow that protocol, that many people. It's impossible. You can't expect that to happen. But they went out and hired and a more cleaning and sanitizing crews. Uh, they got, they're going to be having everybody on health screenings up on arrival. Now, <laughs> health screenings up on arrival. So you're not going to be tested before you can come to the game. You're going to just show up to the game and you get a screening. So that's not a test. That's not a, 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 a Rona 1-9 test. It's just a screening. So that pretty much is saying they're probably going to put a thermometer on your head and see if you got a fever. Now, this thing has been doing tricks and tricks all over the place as far as not knowing what it's going to do. And so now you're going to just take the risk of allowing people to go in and out of a stadium and you're just going to go off a fever. What if, the, what if the symptom is not a fever? What if somebody's asymptomatic? So, I mean, how are you going to control the virus? And you're going to open up concession stands and expect people to eat through a mask? I mean, their mouths are going to be uncovered and they're going to be around each other and they're going to be, you know, it's just too much of a risk. But they're going to be, they said that all the, the uh, staff members are going to have on protective equipment. Social distancing is going to be in the seating. 22, 22% of a stadium is going to look like a training camp, pretty much. But at least I guess some crowd is better than no crowd. But uh, that's going to look weird in football to really see how it looks with no crowd. That's going to really look weird. And then they're also going to be cashless meaning all the concession stands, you can't come up there with green. You got to come up there with a card and slide a card. So that's trying to, they're trying to eliminate a lot of these touching and transactions. And that's smart, but, I mean, can it work? We'll see. Uh, the clear bag that you used to be able to take into the stadium, they're wiping that out. Nothing's, a, nothing's allowed in the stadium. Here's one that's really tricky. No smoking at the stadium. How are you going <laughs> to... How are you going to stop people from smoking? People go into the bathrooms and smoke. People go out into the hallways and smoke and walk around and smoke. I mean, how are you going to stop people from smoking? So I don't know how they're going to pull that off, but we'll see how that goes for the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, but camp has started, and the circumstances of camp, Rona 1-9 list, of course, is taking people out, and now, of course, Injuries are a part of injuries are a part of every season, but I think more so now this season than any other season. Um, we're going to jump into a, a segment that we hadn't had in a long time, and that is called the Casualties Report. Oh my God! In my back. Oh. <laughs> I haven't heard that in a long time. Uh, usually do that during the Cardinals uh, season every year, but when it comes back, it comes back. So here we are. Camp has started, and we got some injuries to report. Not just the Cardinal injuries. Of course, there are a lot of injuries going on throughout the season, but I'm going to just give you some notable ones. But there are a lot of teams that got players that are on the, on the shelf right now. And I'm wondering, how the heck do we have full camps or how the heck is the team going to even get ready for a, a regular season if they can't even keep anybody healthy? But right now, some major injuries that are going down right now. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys, of course, signed Gerald McCoy from the uh, Panthers last year and former 
Buccaneers pass rusher, and he is already out with a quad uh, tendon, so he's out for the season. So they went on and uh, signed uh, my man, Everson Griffin, that which I wanted here at the Cardinals, but he was signed already by the Dallas Cowboys. Our Cardinals have some injuries, and man, I'm going to talk about that in the next segment. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to talk about that now because the segment's pretty much gone. Uh, the Cardinals, uh, Robert Alford is out for the year again. And this is the worst news I've heard all day, and it's just like this breaks my heart. For this kid, first of all, for him not being able to get on the field, first of all, and second of all, that we will not get to see him on the other side of P Patrick Peterson again, another whole season. He is out with a, this time it's not the leg, it is it is the uh, pec muscle, that is, and that's an injury that you cannot play with, So, and it takes time. And another, another player went down with the same exact injury that says, his report says, I forgot the player, but his report said that he's going to be out a su substantial substantial amount of time. So it didn't say his season was over. But now they're reporting that Robert Alford's season is done. So the injury must have been a lot worse than we thought. Unfortunate for him and the Cardinals, I mean, they have to go dig, of course, back into the bag of tricks and pull out, you know, the cornerback opposite Patrick Peterson again. We're going to have that narrative going on again for the season. Um, Byron Murphy probably is going to be the guy again, and rightfully so. He's got the experience over there now. He's, he's got the skill set to be, you know, a good corner in this league. And then, of course, he's got the uh, the cornerback room with uh, Chris Jones, Kevin Peterson, and he added Duke Tom Thompson – or Thomas, I'm sorry, Duke Thomas. But Byron Murphy, for the most part, is going to have to take over those reins again for the season. Or maybe they'll go out on the um, – waiver wire and pick up a couple of more corners. I'm pretty sure you'll see a corner signing to the Cardinals this week at some point. But that's another hard hit, man. That's that's a tough hit because the Vance Joseph's defense was going to be predicated on those outside corners locking up and allowing that inside rush to get to the quarterback. But maybe it'll be on one side now, so we'll see. But I think B. Murphy has done a good job, and I think his second year, he's gonna, I think he'll break out and mid-season or so, or you know, early on, mid, probably after the fourth or fifth game, start getting a flow and rhythm of how he can play these these receivers and, and and be effective. I think he'll be. I think they'll be okay. But I would have loved to have seen Robert Alfred on the field. And I now the question is, what do you? Is he ever going to get in a Cardinal uniform and be on the field? Do we go again next year? Do we, is this time come and gone? I mean, can a guy from two years get back to full strength? I don't think so. I don't think so. Football shape. And football action is way different for you sitting on the sideline watching it. But uh, I wish him all the best, and hopefully he can get back and recover uh, for next year again. Hopefully if we have him back next year. we got to wait another year for Robert Alford. And then DeAndre Hopkins popped up on the uh, injured list, uh, but minor. Everybody's not concerned about it, but a minor hamstring. But see, when you're dealing with a hamstring, you got to be really careful with a hamstring because a hamstring can go from minor to major real quick. Uh, you can tell D-Hop is working hard. He's trying to get that playbook and get things down with Kyler, and he's going hard at it and probably tweaked a little thing here and there. But let him rest it out because if he doesn't rest that thing out and you push it, he can go the wrong way in opposite direction or something and cut and whatever and tweak that sucker, and it will be – it will be uh, a full-blown a full blown uh, hamstring tear. You don't want that. He'll be done for at least five or six weeks. So let's hope the Cardinals handle that with care because <laughs> that's, our, that's our, our, our prize car sitting in the garage. You don't want to scratch on it. And right now it's got a little bit of a – somebody put a couple of fingerprints on the windshield and you got to kind of put that thing in the garage and – Wipe it down and get it shining again. Let it come back out and shine again. So let's be careful with this thing. That's our prized possession. Uh, Injury is going to play a part in a lot of these games and a lot of these teams. And major guys are dropping. We already just seen McCoy for the Cowboys. And then A.J. Green, again, is gone down with a, a tweak and a hamstring himself. So can he, he can never stay healthy. So uh, the rookie Joe Burrow's his main target is out 
right now with a hamstring and probably will be out. Maybe, who knows how long it'll be out, but maybe he'll still be able to start the first game. We don't know, but he's missing time with his quarterback right now. Uh, cornerback, Iman Marshall, ACL for the Ravens. Couple of ACLs, 49ers. Jalen Hurd can't stay on the field. ACL. A lot of these injuries have got to have something to do with this offseason. It has to. I mean, we've always, we have always deal with injuries. That's part of football. It's going to happen. But this many, I'm, I mean, I got a list here. This, I'm just giving you a few guys. There's a list of over 100 guys that are dealing with knacks injuries, n- uh, knickknacks of injuries. So, I mean, when you change your regiment in the offseason, you got to get back into football shape and you usually start at a specific time and you get through the OTAs and all these things work you up to training camp. And by the time you get to ready, some preseason games get under your belt, you get that flow of that, of knowing what a season, the, you know, the, the, the rough and toughness of a season is going to cause or what's going to be like. And so your body gets ready to get, and it gets prepared for that. If you get that cut in half, now all those acute little injuries start to pop up on you. A hamstring here, a tweak there, a tweak there, a muscle here, a muscle there. And it's like, that's going to be hard to deal with. Knock on wood for any of these teams that haven't had it. But I, I have not. I think I went through all 32 of these teams, and everybody has something. It's just a matter of you dodging that big guy on your team or that major signing or that major player in your team, dodging that player being hurt. And Robert Alfred was a major player for the Cardinals. And we uh, hopefully that would be our only big hit. I'm hoping. Uh, but you got to deal with the Rona 1-9 list because a lot of people are off that are on that list still, haven't come back yet. And then you're going to be dealing with these injuries. So what is this season going to really look like? I'm really, I'm really curious of what this season is going to look like. It's going to – be watered down football, in my opinion, and I'm hoping that's not the case. But I'm pretty sure if, fo- if it's football, we're all going to be excited to see football back. But the play is going to suffer early for sure. All these injuries, the list, the the, the COVID list. I mean, it's going to be crazy. No, no preseason games, so you're going to be pretty much using the first three games as preseason games. But we'll see how it all goes down, and I'm hoping everybody can, you know control these injuries because it's, it's going to continue to happen. Uh, we don't have any other injuries of the Cardinals to report. Um, oh, yes, we did. We had uh, one other guy sat out today. Uh, Drake sat out today, but then there was no information of why as to why he sat out. But he sat out of training uh, camp today. But no report of any injury. So that's good. Or is it? I mean, if nobody's reporting anything and he's not there, sometimes that gives you a little eerie feeling. But let's hope everything is okay with that. I don't think it's anything to be alarmed about. My man Cam John Cam Cameron came in and reported that everything was okay, but that was Friday. And then the weekend happened, now Alfred goes down. So, I mean, things change just like that of a drop of a hat. But in our division, uh, uh, a big signing went down over the weekend too, uh, or last week I should say. George Kittle got a five-year extension for seventy-five million dollars, and he's the highest-paid tight end in the NFL right now. And I got a question. My question is: Is he really that good? I'm gonna put Kelsey in there as well. Is Kelsey and Kittle really this good, or are they just products of good systems and good quarterbacks? Uh, usually quarterbacks make a receivers. Can those two guys go on any other team and be as dominant as they have been? I think Kittle is 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 getting the benefits from that heck of a dang Shanahan system. I mean, man. And he's just taking advantage of his opportunity. You can't 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 knock a guy for that and he got paid for doing it. But where is that res- that tied in for the Cardinals? That's what we need. And I, I don't know why I got a feeling that uh, he may not be as as productive as these two guys, Kittle and George, but I think this Arnold kid's going to be something. I, I think we're sleeping on this kid. Uh, watch him. He's gonna he's gonna do some things this year that's gonna turn some heads, and it's gonna be like, okay, we got our tight end. That's gonna you know have to be accounted for on the field. Uh, well, it looks like I'm out of time again. Man, time just comes and goes. But Isaiah Simmons. Uh, 
raved, raved on by Cam Cox last week in camp. It's looking really good in camp. No other injuries to report. Everything to this point is okay. Let's hope the Cardinals can come out of this week and these training camp uh, healthy. And I uh, feel sorry for Robert Alford again. Another year gone by that we won't have him in a Cardinal uniform. Really unfortunate. Really unfortunate. This has been the Casual Sports Show. Earl Burnett. We'll catch you tomorrow, Bird Gang, Suns Nation. Have a good night.